the OGL mess, there really isn't a better term for it, happened, a lot of people talked very seriously about jumping ship from D&D 5th edition to other games. And this happened again when Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast sent the Pinkertons after a YouTuber who got some linked, leaked, I should say, uh, Magic the Gathering cards only three months later, potentially setting up a cycle of quarterly rake stepping on, which were, were due for the third round of that in a month or so. So, um, with this help, all this happened, a lot of people in the sub-community of tabletop games that I will refer to as the story game community, who often, but not monolithically, aren't big fans of the D&D general family of game systems. Not just, not fans of D&D, uh, but also not fans of Pathfinder or uh, OGL um, retro clone systems like Old School Essentials or Dungeon Crawl Classics or that sort of thing jumped on suggesting that what you should really use are games that are powered by the apocalypse or forged in the dark. Now, this is a thing that happens in waves in tabletop gaming. When Exalted came out, there were similar waves of recommendations, helped by White Wolf themselves, helping with this variety of edition warring by offering to give you a free copy of Exalted in its first edition if you destroyed your copies of the D&D third edition rulebooks, which was the current edition at the time, and mailed proof of this to them in the form of the covers without their contents. After that, I've seen similar waves of rec recommendations, but not without the quite the same level of gross edition warring or system warring with Savage Worlds and then later Fate, and now with Forged in the Dark and Powered by the Apocalypse. Now, I've read over multiple games that use these systems and I've had the opportunity to see them play both through actual plays and a little experimentation on my own. They're not completely my cup of tea, but I don't think they're bad either. But based on my own bumps on the road, I can think of a few big bumps that I ran into that are a barrier for me and the groups that I've been a part of for in terms for deciding if we were going to jump ship to these games or these systems in the past when these two hiccups happened. Now, so, this is not me saying you shouldn't play something other than D&D. Quite to the contrary, playing a wide variety of game systems and getting lots of experience of different types of games is good. It helps you as a player and a game master understand what works for you. Um, it gives you new ideas that you can take into other games, whether it's hacking something from Call of Cthulhu or from Gumshoe and incorporating that into your game system or, or like into D&D &D, or just, hey, eventually you, like many other game masters, will go, I have an idea for a game system of my own that kit bashes all these things I've liked from other games and puts them together into one. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but it's a valuable thing, experience to have. And playing more game systems helps you get that. However, just because that there are a very very vocal set of people who like and reflexively rep recommend Powered by the Apocalypse or and Forge of the Dark Games doesn't mean it's necessarily a good first pick for your group. Same thing, for example, for Back in the Day with Exalted or Back in the Day with Savage Worlds or with Fate. Instead, should you decide to keep it into consideration to use these systems, here are about two, two and a half things to watch out for when it comes to deciding if that family of systems is right for you. Number one, the character death spiral or your players like forever characters. One of the things I see come up a lot when it comes to discussion of D&D &D and its related systems, and which carries along to my enjoyment of these games, is the idea of taking a character from being a level one nobody all the way up to being a level 20 hero or even higher operating at levels where you're able to straight up attack and dethrone a god or gods. These are players who are looking not only for a forever game, but a possible forever character. This isn't to say they're opposed to the idea of having their characters die in a game, particularly if it feels narratively appropriate at the time, but their goal is to take a character all the way up every step of the level chart and to experience as much of the world and its setting with that character that they can. This doesn't mean they're munchkin power gamers out to min-max their characters to become the most powerful thing ever in the universe of your game either. A lot of the time this comes from a real desire to role play this character and to see all their that character's life um, 
everything that they can through. They, um, all its character interconnections, um, the various villain or to take on all the villain organizations that we they've run up to in the game, um, to meet the all the leaders of the, the heroic groups that they've helped that has helped them or they've helped along the way, not just from a oh I'm rubbing note from rubbing elbows with the uh, um, high upper classes, but also because your character wants to show gratitude to these organizations and people. They've found a character that they enjoy being. And when they stop playing that character, it's because that campaign as a whole is completely done or that character has died and not one second before. Even with games that are known for chewing through characters like Call of Cthulhu or even Rollmaster, there's a sense that as long as you play your character smartly and your luck holds, that you can keep playing that character for quite some time. And this is where these run into problems with Powered by Apocalypse games and Forged in the Dark games. In terms of for these characters, those games are designed at a core level to have your characters have a expiration date. They either max their playbook and at which point the game will recommend that they do a follow-up character or this character will complete either successfully or unsuccessfully the play clock for their character's goal or die trying either by maxing out their stress removing them from play or just you know regular old death at which point as far as the at which point your character the game says your character's story is done whether even if not the whether or not the campaign itself is not and whether or not the player wants that character story to be done. And so from there, the, the player has to create a new character, whether the player is satisfied with that situation. So, switching a group that is predominantly fans of forever characters to a system that is based around phasing out their characters on a semi-regular basis can lead to a reaction to the players like the one the West of the Pink Floyd had when Roger Waters decided to quit the band, and then get them to end Pink Floyd at the time. One person may be done, but not everyone else is. And this can lead to conflict, too, either between characters, or players, I should say, who are okay with the new setup and the fans of Forever Characters, or from with the rest of the group and the GM. All of that said, changing systems and spending time with other games can lead players who to shift gears to a different approach. And certainly, this can lead to a a uh, situation where a player might become, or after you've changed systems through multiple other things, you will have a player be more flexible with the idea of ending a character's story earlier. Further, if you have a player or players in your group who are the kind to come up with a laundry list of different kind of characters they want to play, that is a sign that this will definitely be something that will work more to their flavor as far as for Powered by the Apocalypse and Forged in the Dark, where they, when they complete their play, when they hit the max level on their playbook, level 10, for example, for uh, Dungeon World, they can then go, okay, this character is done. Like, mechanically, this character is done. Now, I could either tick the next character over to, as being this protege under the same playbook, or I can try a new playbook. Um, for my next character and incorporate that into the story and um, progress things further with my old character fully becoming an NPC. So if that happens, if you have so if you have players who are in your idle moments in the game saying, oh, hey, I also wouldn't mind playing a blank, um, particularly if you've jumped through a couple of the game systems and the players are expanding their horizons a little bit, then you may be in a good spot to then switch over to the Forged and Powered family. But again, want to let your players open up a bit first. A good way to do a test run of this, to see if your group is okay with this kind of concept, is to, if you are going to use Powered by the Apocalypse or Forged in the Dark for this kind of thing, is to have your game be run as a multi-generational game. Think something like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, with Joseph moving from Battle Tendency to Stardust Crusaders, think of him as changing his playbooks to reflect the change of the type of powers he's using, and also to reflect his own aging. 
Number two, the lack of critical success. We are all familiar with the way dice checks work in D&D and a lot of other RPGs. You roll above the target number in a roll high system, you succeed. If you roll below, you fail. Reverse it if it's a roll under system. If you roll a natural one on a roll over system, you automatically fail and there are additional consequences. You roll the maximum possible amount you can roll on the dice in a roll over system, you automatically succeed and there maybe there are some additional benefits. Once again, reverse it if it's a roll under system. Now, depending on the system and your game master, there may be some gradations by how much you fail or by how much you succeed based on how close or how far you are from the target number. Some recent versions of Call of Cthulhu have added elements to their resolution mechanic like this as well. Now, Forged in the Dark and Powered by the Apocalypse games do things a little differently when it comes to the spectrum of success or failure. Instead, your possible result types are critical failure, definite failure with catastrophic consequences. Clear failure, you just fail. Success with consequences, you succeed but not unequivocally and there are some additional negative uh, consequences that will complicate things based on your actions, which will be determined by the GM, and then clear success, you just succeed. You see what's missing here. There's no success with a benefit. This actually popped in my head when I was re-going through uh, Fabula Ultima, a RPG that's meant to model Jap and be inspired by console role-playing games of the Japanese role, uh, the Japanese Dun Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, even Shin Megami Tensei Persona sort of tradition. And it has mechanics in there that are inspired by Forged in the Dark systems, but is not itself Forged in the Dark. And the way the game handles its critical successes um, clicked with me, as I was reading it, that that was the thing that was missing for me from Forged in the Dark by Power of the Apocalypse games. The most that any player can hope for in a skill check is to just succeed, and that was a bounce point for me. Now, this fits with the source games for these. Blades in the Dark borrows a, lot, borrows a lot from the dark and gritty tone of the Thief games, and Apocalypse World is honestly even grittier than Mad Max, aiming for something closer to a boy and his dog for its level of grit. So it makes sense for both games to set their tone for resolution mechanics as one where characters are going to be ones who scrape through by the skin of their teeth and frequently kind of suck at what they're actually trying to do. The problem being is that's not necessarily what your D&D characters from your D&D game were, or what your group's play characters were, if you look at the big picture of your game. So consequently, you as a game master, if you're the one who's pushing this change to a Powered by the Apocalypse or Forge of the Dark System, are going to have to do more work to recalibrate everyone's expectations of what their game's tone is, what your game's tone is going to be, and in turn can lead through some rough driving as you go through this early stretch of the game, because you have to get a group of get your players to be okay with the fact that from what they've been doing before in D and D, the results on those dice are nine times out of ten going to be under the old idiom, failures. Maybe failing into a little bit of success, but, you're, but makes you feel much more like a screw up. That said, if you feel comfortable fudging and fiddling with the forged in the dark and powered by the apocalypse rules for whatever version you're doing, you can fix this on your own to by adjusting the resolution windows to give a critical success option, a option where beyond just success to success plus something else with the player, with you and the player determining what that something else is going to be. How you choose to do that depends on what game you're running and what your group is. Uh, but that is something that, is not necessarily covered in the rule books. There's not even something where like the the, the rule documents their um, their for lack of a better term 
kernel of the system doesn't really give an option in there out of the gate for here's how to incorporate a critical success or success with a benefit into these systems as something to how to handle that and not screw up the balance too much. So that's something you have to be, can figure out on your own. Finally, two and a half, who is rolling the dice? So this is something specific to power in the Mario the Apocalypse games. In those, the GM doesn't roll dice. They interpret and adjudicate the results of the player's die rolls, such as those success with consequences results we were talking about earlier, but they don't roll dice themselves. So in my group uh, that I play in, but don't GM, we were talking about changing systems. Um, actually, after the original OGL mess, and the Game Master brought up Powered by the Apocalypse, and I did mention that Hey, heads up, in Powered by the Apocalypse, the Game Master's role is mainly to serve as an adjudicator for results. They don't roll dice themselves. And when I mentioned this, the GM, my GM, visually deflated. Now, if you're a GM, especially a forever GM, where the act of rolling dice is part of the act of play for you, then Powered by the Apocalypse is definitely not for you because you don't get to do that. Um, I mean, unless you're like, hey, I have a bunch of random tables to address scenarios and that sort of thing that I picked up from various places online um, for doing certain random bits of flavor, and I can roll on those random tables. But if you're like, if one of the things you're doing is rolling dice to impact the action and flow of play, that's off the table. So... Those are my two and a half potholes and speed bumps on the road that I've encountered deciding if Powered by the Apocalypse is the right right for me and for my group. Now, if those aren't issues for you or your group, that is wonderful. Taste is variable by person or group of people. Your mileage may vary, and if this and if those systems have worked for you in the past or work have worked for you or are working for you now, more power to you. Um these are just the bear the the and I didn't call these barriers either really they are speed bumps potholes and other similar moderate obstacles that can impact the flow of play and impact the how fun the game can develop, end up eventually being if you have found a way to implement a form of success with an added benefit by the way to your powered by the apocalypse or forge of the dark game or if you have an iteration of those systems that doesn't have those issues that you found um actually please share them in the comments below i'd love to find a find the forged in the dark or powered by the apocalypse game that is right for me and it, so and just enjoy checking out new game systems in general anyway so feel free to share those in the comments Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.